So we are, we've been out for a little while now and Dam Rules, where dreams are made, up at Indian Queens, have very kindly allowed us to take out this Honda CL500. Now it's like a, a scrambler type bike. They're not intending it to be a scrambler, type, scrambler bike, but they're intending it to look like a scrambler bike and feel like a scrambler bike. So you can have a bit of fun, you know, get out and about. And I was saying to Mark at Damrills, will it be almost like a comparison, a Honda comparison to the uh, Royal Enfield Scram? And if you think about the Royal Enfield Scram in 30 years, with all the refinements that Honda have with all of their engines, that's where this is probably based. So, what's it like? So 500, so nobody's there. 500, see if we're getting up to up to speed. Six speed box. And it's very comfortable. I tell you what, it's very planted. Now this has got hardly any weight to it whatsoever. This bike feels so well planted, it's unbelievable. But uh, you know, it's really smooth as well. It's obviously a twin. Honda twin, but with Honda you get all the refinements. It's really, really nice. Open to the elements, so you get all the all the wind in your face, wind on your body, all of that good stuff. And it feels, it feels like riding the Scram, but a much smoother version of the Scram. Really nice. I like it. So, looking up the front, this this bit here almost reminds me of the Ducati Scrambler, that sort of thing. I think it might be because it's the white more than anything that's reminding me of it. But for 500cc, it's not going to set the world on fire, but actually, for a day out in the country, this is a really lovely little bike. Really nice little bike. It's really light. Put up on the card somewhere about now, about all the weights, fuel, laden weight, all of the dimensions, all of that good stuff. But this bike is 5999, so shade off 6,000 pounds. So you could own a 500 from Honda for six grand. It's actually quite special. It's really smooth, really smooth indeed. The seat is really comfy. And we'll look at the seat later because I think the seat has got a lot to do with some of the styling this um, on this bike so it's very very thin as you can imagine and it feels quite alien to me because the bikes that we normally are riding like GSAs, GSs that sort of stuff they're much wider there's lots of stuff around you whereas there is nothing around you this is just you and the world and this you could argue this is how you're meant to enjoy motorcycling being at one with the elements flicking the bike around, enjoying the country roads on a day like this, this bike is incredible. Now that screen may look nice, but I'm getting a little bit of wind on my shoulders, obviously because it's a naked bike. However, I have not got any buffeting or anything on my helmet. I wear a peaked helmet and on a lot of these bikes, you get up to speed and your peak is trying to pull your head off because the peak is made to be behind some sort of screen where you're a little bit more protected. On this bike, it's just clean air. And it just shows that all the stuff that they do, all the uh, R&D and stuff like that, that they do around all the bits on the bike actually do work. And it makes, makes you kind of think and reevaluate why would you have all of this extra screens and stuff for different bikes. And in actual fact, this is doing the trick. So seat position, very upright very upright. My legs feel a little bit more bent than 90 degrees. So it feels more like a sporty-ish type ride to me. I'm five foot 10, five foot 11, something like that. And it feels very comfortable, but very in marginally more sporty than you would think the feel of the, the leg position and the peg position would be. My arms are not too wide not too narrow obviously talking about the handbars just the right width apart and the gearbox really quite smooth there's no quick shifter on this 
up or down. It's as basic as you can get, really. And I say basic, but, you know, these this day and age, they're nowhere near basic like they used to be, are they? I mean, let's face it. Right. It certainly likes to be ridden once you've got the revs up. Wait for Mark to get out of the way. Once you've got the revs up, and it sings. I don't know whether you'd be able to hear that exhaust pipe as much as I can while I'm riding, but the sound of it is really quite a pleasant sound. It makes you feel like you're on something a little bit bigger. I really like that. Now, standard switch gear, very, very minimal switch gear. Indicators, lights, horn on the left-hand side. And interestingly enough, the indicator on this Honda is in just the right place for my thumb now. So that's really good. I haven't hit the horn at all. On the right hand side, you've got your hazard starter and your kill switch. That's it. No frills here, but do you need them on a bike like this? No vibrations at all through the pegs or the handlebars. Really surprised about that. I thought I would have some vibrations, but not one bit at all. The throttle, obviously, as you, you would imagine on this um, size of a bike, you're having to give it a little bit more on the throttle to get it to sing. But that's half the, half the enjoyment of a bike like this. And it's really quite responsive, really responsive. A little bit of engine braking, which is really, really nice. But the screen. Now, the screen is like a monochrome. I can see it. I know how fast I'm going. and I know what gear I'm in. I know what fuel's there. I know what the time is. But I'm having to spend more time looking down to get the information than I would really like because it's not bright enough. It's really not bright. And this is a really bright day. But it's just not bright enough to feel it. So let's change down a gear for hear that sing. I tell you what, you can flick this bike around all day long and it just wants it. It wants to be flicked. That's flicked, F-L-I-C-K-E-D. You rude people. But equally, pottering around at 30, it's really smooth, it's planted, it's got a bit of presence on the road. I might go so far as saying it's quite a sublime bike to ride. And it's quite strange. You know you listen to different music and the different music might put you in a completely different space. You get on a different bike, you get on a sports bike and you want to go like mad, mad, you know, speed up, you want to be racing everywhere. Get on an adventure bike, nice and comfy, does everything you want. Get on a bike like this, makes you behave completely different like a gentleman or a lady you know when they do the gentleman's ride I would imagine something like this with your suit on would be incredible to ride just singing it's just purring along now the brakes there is no one behind me whatsoever so I'm going to see what the brakes are like really nice brakes quite a dip on the front but not that jolt back up again so it's very controlled as to how that damp allows the uh, suspension to come back up. Which is quite pleasing actually. So in an emergency stop, you're going to dip a little bit, but it's not going to fling you back. Right, 30 miles an hour in fourth gear into the 60. 50. Very smart bike, very, very nice. Suspension's really set up well, actually. This is really dealing with bumps and knocks in the road really quite smoothly. I can feel them, but not at the detriment of riding. You know that feeling when you really need a pee and every bump makes you think, I need a wee, I need a wee, I need a wee. I think that if you were busting for a pee, this bike is gonna say, yeah, don't worry, I'll get you there but I'm not going to bounce all the pee out of you. <laughs> what an analogy. <laughs> but, wow, what a, what a piece of fun. 
Oh, look, I digress. I feel like a gentleman, and I've just been on a gentleman's ride. You can go on ladies' rides as well <laughs> on this amazing machine. What is it? Now, this is the Honda CL500. That looks pretty cool. It not only looks cool, it is fabulous to ride. Really? Fabulous. Now, this is like Honda's version of the Scrambler. It's not a Scrambler. It's not meant to be a scrambler, but it's meant to give you the feeling of being on a scrambler, all the fun of a scrambler, not necessarily up to scrambler standards, but looks like a scrambler. It looks really smart and it gives you loads of fun. And I tell you what, riding along, I thought, is this going to be as nice as the scram? Because you know how much I like the, the Royal Enfield scram. Only the red and white one though. Yeah. In actual fact, this is... I Whoa, would... be careful what you say. Oh, I wouldn't say anything then. I think if you like the Scram, you'll like this. Royal Enfield Scram is amazing. Is that a bit like if you like peas and you like cheese, you'll like these cheesy peas? Yeah, you could do. There's been a lot of references to the fascio, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Royal Enfield 411 Scram, really lovely bike. And I said in the showroom, is this pitched against that? And they kind of think, well, no, it's not, because it's kind of like a scrambler. But think 30 years ahead from where we're all Norton Arnett, Royal Enfield Arnett. How many, bike, how many bike companies are you going to put in there? Royal Enfield now, with the, the scram and how smooth this is, how well-defined all of the bits that they put together are, and you'd end up with this. It's really comfortable. I mean, look at this. See, I don't think 30 years, I think it's closer than that. Probably. I was giving them a bit of time. Yeah. As you can see, my, knee, my knees are, are not 90 degrees. They feel a little bit more bent. So I kind of get a upright, gentleman ride, loving countryside, that sort of thing. But with the sporty type feel, because only like a couple of degrees more than normal, and it feels a little bit more sporty. The 500cc engine, or well, the 500 engine, it really cracks on. Really cracks on. There was a couple of places where I was shooting up behind Mark, he was on a scooter, and he was waiting for me, not expecting me to turn up right behind him <laughs> so quickly. It gets up to speed. It's not gonna set the world on fire, but you're not gonna go racing around on a bike like this. And I was talking when I was riding, saying if money was no object, I'd have every bike for every different purpose. And this is like real fun flickable there's no weight to it at all it, you can flick it around and it sticks to the road like a limpet but it also almost looks a little bit like the ducati scrambler similar so it's kind of like molded in with scram 411 ducati scrambler so it's giving you that feeling guess Would how you much even it... say a bmw 90 without the boxer engine similar sort, yeah, of, shape, yeah, similar similar. sort of size although it's not got the things out the side yeah, which is yeah. good how much do you reckon this is in England at the moment? Uh, 14 shillings and sixpence. Nearly. It's 5,990 something, so it's a shade shy of 6,000 pounds. Wow. Now, it's a lot of money, especially at the moment with everybody fighting to get keep their money and not many people have got money. But what a special bike for six grand. But look I at like this. it. My big fat bottom is hiding this. Look at this seat. You like those kinds of seats. I really like it. It's oldie worldy oldie style but new if that makes sense they've, yep. re they've really made this bike an old style looking bike but also new it's really weird i love the fact that the can comes up here and it also almost reminds me of the triumph bonnevilles and and that ducati scrambler bit of silver bling on it as well matte black engine is sublime Sublime? Is that the right one? Yeah, I think so. It's really lovely. And when you come slow, slow speed, really easy to control. And all you can hear is this. Excellent. It's just so nice. I think on the Scram video, I said, I'd like to be wearing tweed, riding through the Yorkshire Dales. Don't tell me when you get up to the weekend. Well, <laughs> well it's funny, isn't it? You listen to a bit of music and it puts you back in the spot you first heard it and the experience you had. This bike. I've never ridden through the Dales, never, you know, I've enjoyed my time on the bike, but riding around thinking I'm just going to enjoy Hang on a minute, you didn't mention ride. tweed there either. No, you no. <laughs> you I'm going to go tweed. right out and buy some. <laughs> but it put me in a place I've never been before, really relaxed, enjoyable ride, 
on a bike that actually feels like it looks really nice. And I know they all do that, but this really put me in a special place. I don't know why. So, should we have a look at the switch gear? Yep. Right, switch gear for this. Really basic, there are no frills on this, but to be fair, why do you need frills on every bike? And that's part of the charm of not having it on this. Every day's a two-two day, mate. It is. <laughs> so we've got lights, horn, indicators, and interestingly enough, I wasn't hitting the horn at all. My thumb was falling into the position of the indicators really easily. On the right hand side, you've got your starter hazards and kill switch. And then you come all the way up to these very round lights. Uh, no, lights, mirrors. We're at wing mirrors. Yeah, really nice. I'm doing, I'm doing art there, I was getting you in the mirror. I, Hello. I could see everything I needed to see, a little bit of my arm, but just in the right place, had a really good view. And then we come to this cockpit, the screen. Now, interestingly enough, where's the key? Oh, no key. Uh, the key's down here. I don't know whether you can see it, just there. And I've never ridden a bike with a key down there. Ah, it feels very, it feels like you're like in the war delivering post. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, the screen looks really bright on the camera here. However, I had no issues with it. I could see it, but I really had to pay attention to the screen because I couldn't quite see how fast it was going unless I spent a little bit more time looking at it. I'd like that to be a little bit brighter so that you could purposely see um, the speed. I could make it out, but I had to spend too much time not looking at the road to see what speed I, I was at. But, you know, this sort of bike, it's easy to go over the speed anywhere, but this sort of bike is like a poodling bike. I felt very relaxed and very calm. It was like Sunday afternoon is every afternoon on this bike. It's amazing. Then we got the lights, and the lights are on all the time again. This is a Honda thing, isn't it? I don't know whether you can turn them off, but they look really smart, don't they? They do, but I have an issue. Yeah. Anyway, let's not go there. This screen. Oh, you so know, let's look at these. This light here first. I really like the fact that it's got four little eyes. It yeah. It's like an evil bee. Yeah, an evil bee. But this screen. It's not adjustable. Let's talk about that then, because that reminds me of the BMW 9T Scrambler, Urban Scrambler. Oh yeah? Exactly the same. I was saying as I was riding, it's a real surprise that all I had was clean air going over me. There was no holding onto my helmet because the peak was getting caught underneath the, the wind. This did a spectacular, uh, no? Spe <laughs> spectacular job dissipating or doing something to the wind, either chucking it over me, but I felt it wasn't clean, clean wind, air, because it was hitting me, but there was no force on my helmet at all. I know that the wind was hitting my helmet because I had flies and all sorts over my visor, which is, you know, not a normal occurrence for me. Mm -hmm. Then we've got gaiters, Nissin brakes, good brakes, pads all round, good Dunlop tires, and I was saying when I stopped, how bouncy is that? Yeah. However. It takes a bit of getting used to. Well, there you would think that it would throw you all over the place. I did no. a bit of an emergency stop to just see what the brakes were like when I was riding. It dips quite a bit, but it doesn't shoot up. No. Really quite well damped. Seat's really comfy. There is no pillying for me on this bike. <coughs> no pillying at you all. You carry one on there. No, and then you've got the lights on the back. You like these lights? I think they look quite special. LED lights. <coughs> Excuse me. Now these aren't on all the time, so I have them on the front. But they're really bright, aren't they? Yep. But woo, woo, I like that woo. exhaust. <coughs> Excuse me. I do like it. Really, really nice um, damping and suspension. I rode the Suzuki DE 800 or 800 DE, whichever it is. Beestrom DE. Yeah. Very nice bike. The suspension was really hard. And I said when I was riding, sometimes you really need a wee. Uh -huh. And every bump you go over, it reminds you how much you need to go for a wee. This deals with all of the bumps on the road. You could last all day. Yeah, really, really smoothly. And it would go, I know you want a wee, but I'll just get you around the next corner and there'll be a bush. <laughs> no, there's not. You know, and you want to keep going and it takes your mind off. It deals with it really well. Firm, but very fair. Firm, but fair. Yeah. I really like it. Can I have your key? 
Because I'm going to show you something now that might be a little bit old school. Oh, look at that. That's really quite good, isn't it? That is old school. It is? Yeah. I'm going yeah. to throw the key in the forest now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. I really, really like it. For six grand. There are other bikes that are cheaper. There are other bikes that will give you the fun that you want. But it depends what sort of fun you want. And this is a Honda. You don't get many Hondas for around that sort of money that just give you the thrill. But when you look away from it, when you go and look for a bike, if I was looking at this bike and walked away, I would look back at this bike. It's your bike. And that says an awful lot. I've had some bikes that I just walk off from and yeah. you know that's not a keeper. You walk off from your bike and if every time you look back, you know that's a keeper. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> love the bike. Thanks Dan Rules for letting us take it out. Go down there, do really good deals. Hit the like, subscribe buttons, they'll be all over the place. And we'll hopefully see you in another video.